welcome back. Have you ever wondered why your house still looks cluttered even after you've decluttered so many things, spent forever cleaning, and for whatever reason, you're still feeling overwhelmed in your space, you're still feeling like there's just too much stuff? Well, today I am here to give you 20 reasons why your house might still be looking cluttered. Too many pictures. <laughs> this one can be a really, really easy one to kind of overlook because we want our walls to be pretty and decorated and we want somewhere for your eye to rest. But sometimes just having too many pictures, and this goes with kids' artwork as well, can really just add to visual overwhelm and your house looking cluttered. So try and think of how you might be able to pare down the number of pictures on your wall and just have maybe one simple statement picture or maybe just a few smaller ones. But having too many pictures can definitely add it to visual clutter. So pick your favorites, pick your kids' favorite artwork pieces and just kind of stick with those. Bookcases can add the most beautiful and cozy feel to a home, but if they're overstuffed with books, they can really, really look completely overwhelming. So having a bookcase with some books on it, along with maybe a, a couple other little pieces of decor can be really, really lovely. But just loading a bookcase full of books can be a little bit too much. So if you have a bookcase in your house and it's stuffed, pull a few books down, see what you think, you might like it a lot better. I used to be guilty of majorly over accessorizing my home. And what I mean by this is just overdoing it on decor. I love home decor so much. It's really hard for me to kind of rein myself in. And as I've been practicing doing that these last several months that I've kind of taken on a more minimal mindset, I've really enjoyed not having so many decor pieces. So if I look back at my home, let's say a year ago in the fall, I would have just so many things cluttering up, even my kitchen counters. I would just fill every single empty space with decor. And it was all decor that I thought was beautiful and that I loved, but too much of it became too much. So I recommend just picking, again, your very, very favorites and less is more. I really do feel like that. Less is more, that mentality is amazing. Too many items on the kitchen counters. So maybe you've got your kitchen aid, your blender, your toaster, your coffee maker. It just adds up to be a lot and this can be super tricky if you feel like that's the only place you have to put it because you're limited on storage. But what I recommend doing is just maybe going through your cupboards and editing down the number of glasses and plates, things like that that you are storing to make a little bit more room if you feel like that's possible and just try not to store so much. But really overall, if you can try to cut back on the number of things that you are, let's say, storing on your kitchen counters, it can have a really positive effect on your home. All right, things without a home, things that you literally carry from room to room and just set down because you have no idea where it goes. I recommend finding a home for it or getting rid of it. Because if it's something that you just have to keep handling, it's taking up your time and it's making your house look cluttered. So it might not be worth it to have it at all. So try and create a home for everything so that when you see something out, you can easily put it away. So this one is supplies sitting out for unaccomplished projects. So if you have kids, especially, or maybe you're really crafty and you've, you've gotten to the middle of a project and you just didn't have time to finish it, instead of leaving everything kind of spread all over the place, have a little storage box, maybe a pretty basket or something with a lid. It looks really beautiful and your home doesn't have to have that clutter even though you're not finished with the project you're working on. Mail on the counters. Oh, this is such a hard one and let me know if this is a problem in your house and down below in the comments because I feel like mail is so tricky. If I hide it away, then I forget about it and there are probably bills in there. So that's not really a good solution. But having something like a little mail storage bin and these are really cute and they're actually super affordable. I've talked about them before, but they can be really nice because the mail's contained, but it's still visible so that you don't 
forget about it. So I would recommend getting some kind of little mail basket or bin so that you can contain it because mail all over the counter or wherever <laughs> does not look very good. Oh, this next one is huge and I think it's one that not many of us really think about, but that is magnets and papers, artwork again, bills, whatever, on the refrigerator. I have really noticed that pulling down magnets, not displaying kids' artwork on the fridge specifically, has really, really helped to a clutter-free feeling in my home and in my space overall. So I have a little spot where I keep my magnets because I know I'm gonna wanna put a few things up there from time to time. But overall, I do not have things on my fridge. Just try it out. Just kind of pull it down for like a day or two. See how you feel. If you don't like it, you can always put it back. Laundry left sitting out can really cause a lot of visual clutter and make your home feel maybe even messier than it really is. So I have tried, especially recently, and I'm kind of on and off with this habit, but I have tried to fold a load each time it comes out of the dryer. So I start the washer in the morning and then pull the clothes out and I'm folding them in the afternoon. Try and see how you feel about just doing one load a day and folding out, folding the clothes as they come out. That really helps with wrinkles too. So try it out, see what you think, but I highly, highly recommend it. I have mentioned decluttering before you organize several times. And one of the reasons is because too many organization bins can actually add to clutter. So I feel like declutter first, then get your organization bins because you just have less in your home, whether it's in your garage, in your office, or just kind of scattered around your house. Declutter, then figure out how many bins you actually need and just stick with that and it will really, really help cut down on clutter. Systems for paperwork are really important because papers can be a nightmare. Let me know if you relate, but between kids coming home from school and emptying out their backpacks and the mail that we've opened up and just a million other things, I feel like paper can get super out of control. So go through your paper, see what they mainly are and make categories, have folders, create some kind of system where you know kids artwork goes here, mail goes here, whatever it is, but just have different folders, binders, boxes, bins, <laughs> systems that can help contain your paper clutter because paper clutter is real. Having a place to store your electronics and your cords is really, really nice because these cords really don't look very visually appealing and they can add to the clutter and overwhelm in your home. So having different docking stations where you might keep all of your electronics and the chargers that go with them or having a drawer that you designate for um, storing cords that you're not using at the moment, trying to hide the cords for your TV and your DVD player. They sell these little strips. I've seen them on Amazon that actually hide your cords and they just stick right on the wall if you don't wanna drill through. So I know that's not always fun or an option. So trying to hide your cords and your electronics is a really good idea. It just takes a tiny, tiny bit of thought beforehand. Stuff on top of nightstands and dressers. I am not gonna lie to you. I am right now looking at the surface of my dresser and it is a cluttered mess. This is one that you almost constantly have to be just aware of, um, not letting things pile up. And I've noticed that clutter attracts clutter. Let me know if you agree, but I feel like if the space is pretty clear, it's harder to set something down there because you're gonna mess it up. But if you've already started piling a few things, it's like, oh, this is definitely a landing zone for my junk. And you just add it on, your kids add it on, your spouse, whatever, and it just becomes really, really cluttered. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 things on the top of my dresser right now, and I'm not proud of it. Items on the bathroom counters. This one goes just like the kitchen. If you have too many things you're storing on the counter, it can look really overwhelming. So I actually have a makeup organizer that I'm using right now that I really like to get rid of. Although I love it, it's kind of bulky, so I don't feel like it fits underneath the sink. It's kind of cumbersome to like pull out. So the only place for it is on the counter. 
but it's clutter and I don't love that. So I'm trying to think of how I can pare everything down and put it in a bag that I can hide away. Also maybe trying to store your lotions underneath the um, sink might be a good idea. Just anything you can eliminate from your bathroom counters can really, really help. And then going along with that, trying to get soap dispensers that don't have labels. Sometimes all of that writing and the pictures that come on, let's say the soap dispensers from the store, can add a little bit to the visual clutter. So trying to get a little bit more streamlined and clean looking dispensers can really, really help. If you notice that things are spilling over from their designated place, it might be time to edit down the items that are meant to go in that space. So for example, my kids have this bookcase in their room and I was noticing that it was literally like spilling out all over their bedroom. So that told me they've got too many books. So I went ahead and just edited down all the books to make sure that they fit much more nicely in this space. And if they did happen to spill out, it wouldn't be nearly as many. So try just cutting things down. I like to say cut them in half and you're not getting rid of it. You're just kind of tucking it away to see if that functions better for you. And if you wanna go ahead and donate things, great, but just make sure that things are fitting really well in the space they're designed to be. So speaking of decluttering, that is obviously an amazing thing to do. I highly recommend it. I recently, along with my family, got rid of over 65% of our possessions. We are loving it, but sometimes, finding a place to put your donations in the meantime before you're able to get to donation centers can be kind of tricky because if you've got a basket in your corner that's full of stuff that's just clutter so having a place that's tucked away my favorite place is the back of my car and before i drive to the donation center i give myself plenty of time to think about whether or not I really wanna donate the items. So trying to have something that is concealed, either in a closet with a lid on it, this also helps you not go back and just like pillage through your stuff. So I highly recommend finding a place in your home for donation items that is tucked away, out of sight, and my car, definitely, definitely my favorite spot. I was literally amazed the other day when I went through my house and just collected garbage trash i could not believe it i was amazed so going through your house with a little trash bag or grocery sack every now and then and just trying to collect little wrappers again especially if you have kids open drawers get little pieces of trash out of there it's amazing what kids can find to use as little garbage cans so go through your house get little pieces of trash it's amazing how much you'll be able to find. I recently went through our shoes and could not believe how many I was able to get rid of. Either we'd outgrown them or they were just completely worn through. So going through your shoes can be a really helpful way of both eliminating clutter and making your life easier because you're gonna be able to find what you're looking for much faster. So go through your shoes, get rid of ones that you're not wearing, ones that you don't need, and try and keep that under control. So that space you might wanna go through every season as things transition um, and just kind of make that a habit so that the shoes do not get completely out of control. Thank you so much for watching today. I really appreciate it. Please go ahead and click subscribe before you leave for more videos like this and I will catch you in the next one. Bye.